Hello, everyone. This is President Sunday here, and little does everyone know, I have a level of hypocrisy when it comes to intellectualism. I am actually scared about my own public relation, and this naughty racist by the name of Pill Eater, who, by the way, has his master's degree and I do not, um, is going to do a lecture on me, and I will now point out his fallacies. Yeah, um, this guy I used to watch named President Sunday, I know he's very controversial, kind of autistic geek, and he is funny, but um, uh, some little goofiness about him is that he pretends to be a big intellectual, but he's really scared of his own public relations and the fact that he's so, you know, open-minded, but when he meets someone outside of his echo chamber... He will get upset about it. He has to have it a certain way, which, by the way, is, is a sign of autism. Let me elaborate on his hypocrisy and why Sunday and similar YouTubers like him are really hypocritical. They, they like the subculture of intellectualism and pretending they're in ivory tower academia, but they will not, they will not approach people when it comes to be hurting their PR so they can't make money anymore. I'll explain. So, uh, about a day ago, President Sunday wrote, This is a notice that I will be offering my channel as a platform to host debates from serious thinkers or small content creators who lack an audience, doing good work and getting media traction and activities at odds. So here's my small contribution to the cause. Please, fe please feel free to recommend candidates to message me if they want to avail themselves of it. Candidates, ooh. And he also read a, almost a week ago, if I hosted debates between content creators that I personally selected for intellectual quality, intellectual quality, is that something people would be interested in seeing? And um, I don't know how this guy, wh what he believes intellectual quality is, unless this is this kind of echo chamber. And here, I want to put focus on his incredible pretentious statement about people, content creators, not getting in enough audiences, that they're not, um, you know, having, the, you know, he's doing good for the community. See, he's, he's giving back and showing that it's all about the message and, you know, we're open to this intellectualism and we're all in this together. Ooh. And so here's the funny part. I asked them honestly and sincerely, can I come on? And as you can see, he loves my comment. Yeah, yeah, the little heart, the, he loves my comment, and he, he posted, like, about 3 in the morning EST time. I, I was probably asleep, so isn't that interesting? That, yeah, he's he is open to his intellectual, and he wants anybody on, and, okay, that's, he goes, let's chat sometime, and he replied to that, let's chat sometime, right? And that was, and here, here it is on my phone, I actually, um show the heart, and he replied, let's chat sometime. Nothing wrong with that, right? Then all of a sudden, that early morning, he retracted the heart in the comments. Ooh, by mistake, with someone who has just as a, a thousand subscribers as he has, you think we'd both be intellectual giants fighting against the reactionary canon, right? Right? You know what he replies? I pursued your videos and you referred to Harold Bloom as a despicable Jew. I don't think you're a match for what I'm going for here. Whoa, whoa, what is this? Okay, Cupid? Is this is this okay, Cupid? You were swiping left and you, you got a heart and then you found out I was like Indian or something and you're totally not into Indian women or something. Is that it? But uh, this is why I'm magnifying here his, uh, President Sunday's hypocrisy because, um, excuse me, what did you say some slides ago? This is unnoticed. I will be offering my channel as a platform, as a platform to host debates with serious thinkers. Oh, is Pill Eater a serious thinker? Am I not a serious thinker for calling out someone who is a pretentious fraud, a despicable Jew? It sounds like someone's immature here. It sounds like President Sunday is immature. And I would be that candidate for your cause. And I don't know why you uh, uh, decided to refund back me. Refund back. Look, the heart. I wonder, I wonder what's happening here, Sunday. Oh, let's look at his other candidates that are really good from him. Uh, heart on Victor 
a small YouTuber who's well-versed in Marxist economics, ooh, like Richard Wolff. He's great. I'd definitely love to host something involving him. Like, I don't know econ Marxist economics. Where is this metocracy, Sunday? You should get someone called Derek Vamon. He has a YouTube channel called Varnvlog. That's quite interesting. Bearded fellow with the glasses. Ooh, bearded gal with the flaxes. Marcus Economic. Does that beat someone who calls someone a despicable Jew Sunday? Come on. Let me, let me reframe myself here in saying that calling someone a Jew is not racist. It's the same as calling someone a Catholic. You could just say a despicable Catholic. A despicable Muslim. Maybe I should put on my E. Michael Josephia. You can't call someone a despicable Catholic. You can't call Jews because that's anti-Semitism. What now? Sorry for my bad E. Michael Jones accent, but I'm mainly citing an Andrew Joyce article on Occidental Observer, yes, a white nationalist sympathetic academic journal, about Harold Bloom. And they call him what? An unconventional Jewish guru. Is that racist? I think they're just calling out his faith. I mean, there's atheists that don't like Christians. Why aren't the atheists pointing out about Jews? Why can't I criticize Jews? And in a bizarre way, I, as an English major, had to deal with scammy people like Bloom. I don't even care if this is Camille Paglia's doctor. Bloom did something really bad to the English department, whether you come from uh, Nazi persuasion, nationalist persuasion or not. I don't even come from that persuasion. I'm coming from the persuasion that Bloom is an arrogant individual and might have something to do with his Jewish faith and identity. I mean, uh, what happened back in 2016 when Sam Hyde had Jews rock? Jews rock. Mad TV, ring a bell. Like, it's funny to point out Jews. Why, why can't we say that? I mean, it's, it's a funny thing. And it seems like Sunday, like, is a shill for not even discussing the JQ. I mean, it's like, this is like, if you call yourself a big intellectual, maybe you can talk about Jewish power for once, or Jewish intellectualism. It doesn't make you an anti-Semite. It makes you interested in knowing about races, and you're more of an open-minded, multicultural person if you are aware of Jewish interest. Okay, maybe I should hit home what Harold Bloom is saying and why I find Harold Bloom a despicable Jew. But Harold Bloom says, well, at least that Joyce is citing here, perhaps the most insidious of Bloom's proffered notions, however, was the idea that the Western literary canon was something universal and completely detached from Western culture and the Western peoples. And so what's Bloom doing here with the English language? What is he doing with intellectualism, he's advocating Americanism. He's advocating individualism, liberalism, universalism, democracy. To Bloom, that's intellectualism. Okay, is that the crux of you, Sunday? Do you believe in those things? Is that is that's why you're on your YouTube crusade? You're on a YouTube crusade because you're trying to enlighten the ideologues of far left and far right and reactionaries that they should all just be this worshiping this fake. Socrates land of ever I mean again maybe I'm citing Schopenhauer Nietzsche point Nietzschean points here but there is kind of something arrogant when you're LARPing as this thing that Bloom you know accelerated this LARPyism the enigma of Shakespeare is his universalism I don't even believe Shakespeare is a real person I think Shakespeare was a collective of people collective of English people and there are is that bad is that conspiratorial there's just something really arrogant about how you can't even deconstruct your most holiest figure of Harold Bloom. And to me, this is where I'm getting at. And I would do an extra video on Harold Bloom, and I was thinking about it. Now I feel like I should do this video, but then this guy, this guy who, who, who got triggered over saying I insulted his favorite icon, now I have to, you have to, I have to shoot this fish in a barrel. Okay? Maybe I'll, I'll drive home the point further. So, George R. R. Martin talks about his favorite books, you know, at a convention, you know, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. He's loved by soy boys and nerds everywhere because, you know, Game of Thrones is now an HBO show. But I grew up at a time where it was just a board game published by Fantasy Flight Games, you know, and his books were some obscure, like, fantasy pulps. I, I, no one ever thought of it. Now everybody has to read it because of HBO, right? Well, Martin sadly is a defender of the publishing industry. He's a defender of this whole 
the English language literature can be saved, and I'm so better than thou, uh, this Christian lander master's degree kind of snobbery, right? And you know what he says, uh, the uh, 033 mark, he says, uh, maybe I'll, I, may my George R. R. Martin <laughs> accent is bad, but he says that in Game of Thrones, he wrote about how one person's life is a single book. You read that book, that's your whole life. But if you read a thousand books, you have a thousand lives. And guess what I heard? Whoa! Whoa! That's great, Martin! Whoa! I've never heard an audience clap and applaud Martin for celebrating the publishing industry, for selling consumerism. For, for, for um, insinuating that the more books you have, the more smarter you are. This is, this, is a, this is a scam. This is a scam because it's about assuming that if we consume in books, not YouTube videos, not experiences, not going to the military, that, whoa, applaud. You know, and then, then this this audience is really dumb because there's another marker where they like applaud him for like saying that his favorite book is like J.R. Tolkien or something. Whoa, Hobbit! You like the Hobbit? You know, it shows you how dumb, how dumb the audience is. How every one of these dumb idiots went to Temple University and got their cultural anthropology degree. It shows you how dumb they are. And so, so you're telling me like all these state school people should all follow this cult of nothingness, this, this cult of, you know, I'm going to be a part of this, this, this Western canon. That's bloomism for you. And I'm such an anti-bloomite. Okay. This is what president Sunday is in a nutshell. Okay. President new reaction is a scam. You know, he gets to mix up votes and down votes about how neo reactionary doesn't make people enlightened to Harold Bloom. But you know what? Nobody. The English department. The English department. I don't know if you're really into white girls or not, or Taylor Swift white girls. I mean, I'm not aroused by that. I mean, I'm not aroused by bull dykes and pretty clothes, but some people are. And some people think this is like the tenement of white nationalism. But this is what President Sunday is. He's literally nobody asking for the English department. For the subcultural hilarious meritocracy thing. That he thinks that reading great works. But, you know, then he has this like a skewed conservatism. That somehow is going to flirt with postmodern art. Or the, the right way. And it's very this waspian arrogance. You know, it's dishonest. It's not true intellectuals. He's saving face from his stupid PR. Because he has fantasies about being on TED Talks. Right? This is, this is, you know, you know what President Sunday is? He's playing chess alone. And he plays chess alone because chess is the greatest board game ever made. Oh, I'm sorry, tabletop game. And um, he's just putting pieces around as he's talking about how Keith Woods is a literal fascist and how I don't like Dave the Distributist because oh, he doesn't understand where I'm coming from. This guy went into Dave the Distributist's Discord server and he re recorded everyone in there to prove how they're scammy. And I agree with that. I, I, I equally dislike the distributist and his little weird gay clandestine. I agree 100%, but you tried to save face and put that video on private. And like this guy, President Sunday, has a vendetta against the distributist and anything to do with distributism because he's jealous and envious that uh, he's not reactionary king. Okay, there's plenty of reasons to dislike distributists. I got more reasons than you are. You do. But, and that's why I was sympathetic to Sunday at first. Is because, yeah, the distributist is a crook. He does scam people. And he is creating this echo chamber. But at the same time, he, he'll save face from the downvote streams he's getting. And uh, not playing in the petty reactionary games or whatnot. And so now he has this YouTube autism where he's playing chess. And um, he's watching furries talking about when racism was allowed and all that stuff. He's like in his own world. You're literally in your own world. If you were intellectual, you would have a debate. I'm, I'm, I'm offering you a debate like Nick Cannon did to Eminem. Except you're not Eminem. Okay? I'm saying this is the invitation. And you have a debate with me, Pill Eater. Who, by the way, is more intellectual than you are. And more have better credentials than you ever have. All right. I don't hide behind. I don't show. I don't hide behind some, some fucking autistic, 
<laughs> conspiratorial like agent man suit and talk and talk big game and pretend I'm an autistic intellectual. You know, I could show my face. I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. That's the difference between you and me, Sunday. So, class dismissed. Uh, thanks for listening. And don't let the door hit you on the way out, Sunday.